Our next guest is not just a union brother, but a postal union brother. A lot of the images that you just saw in that video featured members of his union, the National Postal Mail Handlers Union. That's because the Mail Handlers Union helped organize the September 2011 rallies that were featured in that video. The staff and the officers of our unions collaborate closely on a wide range of issues, on everything from bargaining strategy and interest arbitration to media targeting and lobbying. The mail handlers were among the postal organizations that formed the Save America's Postal Service Coalition. John Haggerty has been an active union member since being hired by the Postal Service in Springfield, Massachusetts in 1984. He has been the union's national president since July 1st, 2002. First with President Young, and now with me, Brother Haggerty has been a strong ally at the bargaining table and on Capitol Hill. He's a trusted source of advice and a great friend to me and to the NALC. Please welcome President John Haggerty of the Mail Handlers Union. Brothers and sisters, my friends on the executive board, distinguished de guests, NALC delegates, it's my honor to ad again address you at your national convention. I was fortunate enough to have done this six years ago in Las Vegas, and I'm very happy to be able to join you again today. I bring you greetings from the National Postal Mail Handlers Union National Executive Board and our 45,000 mail handlers nationwide in a message of solidarity. I'd like to thank Fred Rolando and the rest of the National Executive Board for inviting me and for the job that they are doing in leading the NALC through these troubled times. I've been very impressed with the professionalism and dedication that Fred brings to the table in representing your national organization. And as Fred said, and you could probably imagine, we've been working very closely together over these past several years. In fact, since assuming the position of national president in 2002. I've enjoyed working closely with NALC headquarters on all of the important issues, starting with Bill Young, as Fred mentioned, and now with Fred. It's also been my pleasure over the years to have worked with a number of dedicated NALC union officers in the field during my various jobs, from Jimmy Graham and John Weisman in Springfield, Massachusetts, when I was the local president there. Springfield's in the house. Uh, to my days as the New England president, working with Bob Lind in Boston and John Cassiano. I should also mention that my dad was a letter carrier after being discharged from World War II, and my younger brother is a 26-year member of the NALC in the East Long Meadow, Massachusetts branch. And I want to thank Mike Erasmus for helping my brother through a recent uh, grievance that is still ongoing. Believe it or not, the Postal Service still does violate the contract every once in a while. But uh, Mike, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, although mail handlers and letter carriers perform different duties, and at times we may have different interests, we've always worked together on the important issues. And let me just give you a few examples. Legislation. Obviously, postal reform legislation has been at the top of our agenda for the past several years. We've worked very closely on postal reform and other postal legislation with Jennifer Warburton, Jim Sauber, and Fred Rolando, just to name a few. Uh, we need to ensure that we keep the hard-fought gains that we've made in collective bargaining since 1970, that those are not taken away by the radical right. And I have to commend you on that video. That was a fantastic video, uh, had a lot of good examples in it of what we're up against. We may not always agree on exactly the right path forward, but we do agree that cutting the word service out of the United States Postal Service is a bad idea.
Closing 220 mail processing plants is a bad idea. Closing 3,700 small post offices around the country is a bad idea. Changing first class mail from overnight delivery to two day delivery is a bad idea. And of course, changing mail delivery from six days a week to five days a week is a bad idea. I don't think the politicians and the bigwigs over at L'Enfant Plaza who favor five day delivery know what you do day in and day out for this great country. Do they know that al although we're here in Minneapolis on a warm summer day, that you deliver mail six days a week in 20 de uh, degrees below zero weather? Do they know that you deliver six days a week in the sweltering heat when the mercury hits 100 degrees and above? Do they realize that you contend with aggressive dogs and sometimes aggressive criminals on your day-to-day -day rounds? Are they aware of the NALC heroes who are honored each year for their selfless acts in saving people from burning houses, car accidents, and rescuing, rescuing the elderly when you realize that they haven't picked up their mail? As far as I'm concerned, you're all heroes for the great job that you do day in and day out. You're so effective as the public face of the United States Postal Service. They don't see mail handlers because we work behind the scenes, but they see you, and you make us all look good. Getting back to legislation, there are over 30 bills that were introduced in the last 18 months in Congress that have something to do with the Postal Service. It's been an uphill struggle to convince those in Congress to do the right thing, to keep the USPS as a viable ongoing concern. Those on the lunatic fringe would say that giving the Postal Service back their own money would be a bailout. How crazy is that? It's our money. We put it there. We should be able to use it for our own purposes. I sure hope that the American public is paying attention when they go to the voting booths this fall. And speaking of legislation in Capitol Hill, I want to commend you on your fantastic Colsep program. It's through voluntary contributions that we can go up on Capitol Hill and try to level the playing field with the UPSs and the FedExs of the world. The NALC has done a fantastic job of raising awareness of just how important a PAC can be. We also have a PAC, and many times we will coordinate our fundraising activities, attending the fundraisers for those politicians to ensure that we're getting the message out to the politicians who can help us the most. I also know from reading your publications and website that we also have a lot in common in response to the many difficult issues that our members face. The NPMHU is working hard to educate our members, to mobilize our members, and to motivate our members to get involved at the grassroots level. As I mentioned, we promote our mail handler pack as a way to have our voices heard on Capitol Hill. We've recently completely revamped our website to provide up-to-the-minute news to our members. And I would urge you to visit that website anytime you get a chance to check our news in the mail handler craft. It's simply npmhu.org. And I can assure you that I visit the NALC website on a daily basis to keep up with your goings on as well. We encourage all mail handlers to sign up for our legislative activist network so that they can take action on legislation at a moment's notice. And we continue to train our union representatives both at the national level and in the field to represent our membership on the important issues of the day. And lastly, just like you do, we mail out several different publications and uh, newsletters to our membership and to our shop stewards to keep them up to date. One of the other ways that we work together is on the Postal Employees Relief Fund which provides much needed funding to postal employees when they're stricken with natural disasters, such as a house fire, hurricanes, or a flood. Both Fred and I sit on the board of PERF and are encouraging our members to donate uh, to that fund. And we all know that in November of this year, we need to work together to ensure that we elect a more union-friendly, a more worker-friendly Congress for postal employees and for all working people.
Fred, I want to thank you again for the invitation. I want to thank you for accepting our invitation to speak at our national convention in two weeks, where we'll celebrate our 100th anniversary. We look forward to your inspiring words as we continue to move forward together. In conclusion, let me just say I wish you a productive and successful convention. I wish you nothing but the best. And when all your work is done, may you travel safely back to your families, knowing that you did the best you could to make your union a better, stronger union. I thank you again for having me. I look forward to working with you and your national leaders this year and for many years to come. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. On behalf of the NALC, we got you this block of solid gold. That's why it's heavy. That's for you. How about a letter carrier cheer for John? Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Thanks, John. Love having you.